Hi, my name is Kevin Stevens. I'm on the faculty here at Musicians Institute in Hollywood, California. This lesson is going to be geared toward instructors that have students on their way to Musicians Institute or for students that might be just planning on coming here on their own without a teacher or just for your overall improvement and taking your playing to the next level. These are a few tips that we feel like giving out as far as preparing your student to come to Musicians Institute and addressing some problems that we see students having right off the bat when they arrive. One of the major issues we see when students arrive is that they do not have a strong sense of time or awareness of time. So building a strong awareness of time is something that we really want to establish as soon as possible because having steady time is one of our main jobs as drummers. The most obvious way to get this going with a student or yourself is to start practicing with a steady time source, that being a metronome or a drum machine or click track of some sort. The thing that you really want to make sure that you're addressing with your students with regards to time is that they are not only addressing a constant steady groove or playing fills in time, but the transitions back and forth. The transitions are where most people have problems with the time. So you just want to make sure that your students are practicing playing a steady groove and going back and forth with a fill. Another thing that you want to make sure that your students have together is some basic reading skills. It doesn't have to be advanced at all. We're going to teach those things here when they get to the school. But if they have some basic understanding of notation, of the staff, of a time signature, and some basic note values like quarter notes, eighth notes, and maybe sixteenths, then that would be enough. Counting out loud. That's another thing that we have our students do here at Musicians Institute. And when students first arrive and we start to ask them to count out loud while they're playing, it can really be problematic for certain students who have never done this before. Now, counting out loud is a great skill to have for a few different reasons. One, it's like another fifth limb in, a, in addition to our two hands and two feet. It's another limb, if you will, that we have to keep track of and coordinate with our other four limbs. So it helps us independence-wise. It also helps us connect when we're going to be reading what's on the page with what's going on with our limbs. When we count out loud, it really helps us keep track on the page. It helps us also, when we count out loud, our limbs tend to follow our voice. Okay, And if we're counting, we're more aware of the time, and chances are our limbs are going to be more in time. Some basic four-way coordination would be great to work with a student before they come here. What we tend to see a lot of is that students have come up playing in rock bands and whatnot and doing a lot of right hand on the hi-hat and a lot of right foot on the bass drum together. And most of their fills or their crashes are also happening with their right foot and their right hand together. So then when we have things come up where we're asking them to have their left hand land with their right foot, there's a real problem that happens because literally their muscle memory and the wiring in their, in their muscle memory has never done that before. So they run into a huge roadblock as far as just coordination. So some basic exercises where you would have maybe the first page of stick control, just reading eighth notes back and forth in the different paradiddles and doubles, while you, with your left foot, just with a hi-hat, play quarter notes underneath, or then also do it with your bass drum, you know, quarter notes, while you're reading the eighth note sticking patterns. That way you're getting both your left foot and your right foot used to landing with your left or right hand. Also, what you want to be aware of when you're working with somebody or working yourself on that is that we don't have flamming that the notes are literally landing right on top of each other. We want them nice and accurate. One of the things that we see here at Musicians Institute when students arrive is that they may have their reading together and they may be aware of a lot of different styles and they may have great time, but their awareness of sound and how they sound on the drum set is not developed. So we want to make sure that students are starting to be aware of their sound. And what we mean by that is how is your balance within the drum set? How do the different instruments relate to one another? If we're playing rock and pop music, the bass drum and the snare drum are the main voices. We want those voices up high, right? Up really hot and hard and rocking. That's what the people are dancing to. 
The hi-hat or the cymbal, not so much with rock and pop music. So um, jazz is almost flipped around. We had the ride cymbal and the hi-hat. Those are the main voices. That's where the time is being driven. And the snare and the bass drum are secondary there. So we want those lower in volume. So that's a big awakening that people have when they come here and they have never thought about that. Also, as far as sound, consistency of sound. Is your bass drum the same volume with each hit? Is your snare drum the same volume with each backbeat? Are you playing rim shots on your backbeats? Uh, having your students be able to play a rim shot consistently, another great skill to have because with so much of rock and pop music these days, we want to be able to play consistent rim shots all the time.